You received a note to say that the negotiations with regard to the police station has fell through. And that's why it was not built. Now, why, why was it relevant, the question of the police station? Because we were all trying to find answers, how did these 21 houses happen? Why the 21 houses? And the argument was put forward that, well, maybe there would be a police station, and then the personnel to serve the police station needs barracks. And that's why, but the, but, but the negotiations with regard to the police station fell through. But the negotiations to erect the houses, according to your presentation this morning, did not fill through. This morning you told us that that is part of a lease agreement within Konyama Trust to erect the houses. So the houses were erected, not a problem. Why is that relevant? Because it's directly linked to the homestead of the president, and I'll come back to that. Mr. Minister, you also indicated this morning that um, the reason why you drafted the report was basically in response to the ad hoc committee. At Peter Maritzburg, you refer to point 0.5, point 0.9 of the recommendations of the ad hoc committee, and you said that is your sole mandate and nothing else. And I'll come back to that just now. But Mr. Swart just now pointed out, there was a directive to you given by the president, and I know you don't want us to refer to that, but I do, to the president who appointed you in the first place. And that directive to you was given by the President in his report dated the 14th of August. Mr. Swart just now quoted from that. The Minister of Police has a designated minister to report to Cabinet on a determination to whether the President is liable for any contribution in respect of the security upgrades and then the qualification having regard to the legislation, past practices, culture and findings contained in the respective reports. This was the first indication that you as minister should get involved, and it came from the president. That before then, you were not involved, because the public protector clearly said the Department of Police, not the minister, the Department of Police, and the Treasury should look into it. So the first, when you came onto the scene, was when the president directed the minister. Now, you've indicated since then that you did not act to this. I've asked you that in Peter Maritzburg. You did not act to this. Why not? Because you said you needed a resolution from Parliament. Be that as it may. So you received the resolution from Parliament when the ad hoc committee said in 5.9 the same thing as the President. And one can argue, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, that the ad hoc committee took their line from the President's directive. Maybe it's so, maybe it's not. But earlier today you said basically that you bound yourself to only those four issues, and you dealt only with those four issues in the report, you know them, the swimming pool, um, the cattle crawl, uh, the chicken run, the visitor center, etc. But who asked you to only look into those four things? Because the ad hoc committee also didn't ask you to look into those four things only, neither did the director of the president. The ad hoc committee's recommendation 5.9, which you says is the mandate that you took, says, the committee recommends that the matter of what constitutes security and non-security upgrades, that's the general term that the ad hoc committee used. The ad hoc committee did not say only those four issues. And why is it relevant? Because Honorable Swart just now referred to the long list of things that the Special Investigative Unit indicated are also features that are non-security related, and that's why they are now taking Mr. Nkanya to court. But you continue to argue with all due respect that you have only been busy with those four issues because somebody asked you to look only into those four. But I would suggest there are many other issues as well. But if I may come to this morning's presentation, Honourable Chairperson, and I'm saying this with all due respect to the Honourable Minister, as well as to the colleagues in the ruling party who are arguing and defending on these issues. It reminds me with all respect to the couple, the parents standing next to the parade ground, looking at the army squad marching past, and their dear son Johnny is out of step. And the mother says, look, look my husband, Johnny is the only one in step. All the others are out of step. I'm saying that, why? Because you can bring any report, you can refer to anything in any report, no, it's wrong. That one uh, 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 acted out of his own malice intent, and this one did that, and that one did that. But only Johnny is perfectly in step. Let's come to the, the presentation of this morning. You started off in the first slide referring to the security evaluation done by SAPS, and you argued to say, well, that thing did not refer to, for example, a swimming pool. It said a firefighting capacity. 
And then you said, then the experts and the practitioners came into play. Now I've got to ask you, does that mean that the security evaluation drawn up in the first place does not consist of experts? Who, who, who are drawing up a security evaluation? Are the experts not supposed to do that? I think the experts did that, and the experts said there should be a firefighting capacity. You say then, after that, experts came into play, and they thought the idea would good, be good of what you call a fire pool. I want to put this once and for all. I don't find the word fire pool in the dictionary. I think it's a creation that we've suddenly come up with. I've been to Inkandla, like all the other colleagues. It's a swimming pool, nothing else. It's a swimming pool that has the capacity, the water, all water does have the capacity to fight fire. If we are serious, then we should change the name of all swimming pools in South Africa to fire pools. Because every house can use that as a firefighting capacity. It's a swimming pool. It's not a fire pool. I have to ask the experts, if it's a fire pool, why would the fire pool be in the shape of a boat? It's, a, it's in the form of a boat. I saw that in my own eyes. It's, right, it's, a, it's, a, it's, the, it's the image of a boat. Straight at the back all the way forward to the bow of a boat. A theme for a swimming pool entertainment area. But we say it's a fire pool. Why would it be in that shape? Coincidence? Some expert uh, reason for that? Better pressure? I don't know. But it doesn't make sense. It's a swimming pool. And, and we should stop talking about things to try and whatever. But, Chairperson, let me come to the second slide. The Honourable Minister says, and he refers to all the things in the purple area, with a purple boundary around them, and he says, these are all state properties. Now my question, does those properties belong to the state? The Minister refers to state properties. Do they belong to the state? And if they belong to the state, in what legal fashion do they belong to the state? Does the state have... Uh, title deed to those properties? How does it belong to the state? Or are we calling them state properties because we need to call them state properties so that we can devolve them away from the president? State properties. Does that land belong to the state? Yes or no? And if it's state properties, how do they belong to the state? I would like to come to the third slide where the minister uses these, um, the report of the SIU to answer the question about the super, super superintendent Linda. And that is how we play with words. The police calls him senior superintendent. We now change him to a junior official. But okay, I understand the hierarchy within the police. But what concerns me is that we want to use the report of the SIU, that paragraph that suits us, to say that this man says he did this on, on his own volition. But then we prefer to ignore other things also in the same report that are damning in terms of findings of things that went wrong at Nkandla. I found our work way, our way of doing things very strange. One of the colleagues says, but what action is now being taken against this bad official, Mr. Linda? We've charged him, we found him guilty, we want to sentence him. But maybe we should listen to him. Why don't we listen to Mr. Linda? Don't we think that he may have something to tell us? Or don't you want to hear what Mr. Linda says? Mr. Linda, why on earth would you go around misusing the president's name? Why would you do that? What benefit is there for you? Why would you do that? Don't you want to hear what Mr. Linda has to say? Why would he go around writing in a letter? And we've all seen the letter. The wording is there. He, was, he knows why this need, these 21 houses and everything needs to be constructed. But we, I would suggest, let's call Mr. Linda. Why don't we ask him? I think it's necessary to do so. We as a committee cannot go along hanging this one, judging that one, sentencing this one, but we don't listen to them. Audi alterum partem. I think Mr. Linda needs to be heard. Minister, the fourth slide you used this morning says, the adjacent land... The adjacent land, and that's now all land outside the small circle that you've drawn, the homestead. You says the adjacent land falls under Inconyama Trust, the clinic, the barracks, the helipad. But what about the rest of the property? 
in, in Kunyama Trust, doesn't that also own the property on which the homestead of the president is built? I've been asking this question since at our committee one, and I don't get an answer. And I think it's vital. We are talking about 246 million rand of taxpayers' money. And just a side note, Mr. Minister, you've said on numerous occasions, you don't know where that figure comes from. You've said that. It's page 189 of the Public Protector's Report. That's where the amount comes from. It's there. It's clearly set out. Total amount paid to contractors, 161 million. And by the way, 78 million was paid to one contractor and then the contract was cancelled because of bad work. But the money was paid, 78 million. It's set out there, 246 million. That's where, that's where it comes from. But the question I've been asking since at our committee one is, the property on which the home state of the president is built, to whom does that belong? Does it belong to the president? Does he have title deed? Yes or no? I don't know. Nobody gives me the answer. Does it belong to the Inkoyama Trust? Yes or no? I think we should know because taxpayers' money is being spent there. And then the obvious question that we also don't get an answer to, can you register a legal bond from a bank on property that does not belong to you, if it belongs to the Nkonyama Trust? Can you register that land? We don't know. The 21 houses, Chairperson, that's the fifth slide. The Minister said that an agreement was reached with the, with the Nkonyama Trust to lease that land where the houses are built, and I've referred to that earlier. And you've indicated to us, Minister, in the last meeting in Peter Maritzburg that the houses are 1.1 kilometer away, etc., etc. If you go the way straight, like the crow would fly, it's 300 meters. Why would those houses be built so close to that proximity? No police station, that could not be negotiated, but it could be negotiated to have the houses there. And what happened last time around, we tried to draw a small little circle around the homestead, and everything outside has nothing to do with the president. It's not correct. Why would the Department of Public Works find it necessary to build 21 houses to house police and defense force personnel out there, no military base, no police station? Why there? A helipad next to it. Why? We all know why. Don't let us fool ourselves. We all know why. Obviously because the president stays adjacent to that and is there to serve the president. Finally, Chairperson, the minister ended his conclusion with the last slide. And the last slide made the point, what about the future? And it says the following, we reiterate what has been stated by various investigative reports, that outstanding work must be completed that security re-evaluation shall be conducted soon by a team of experts from law enforcement agencies, and then that such process must strictly adhere to principles of project management, oversight, and adherence to various prescripts. The last sentence. Isn't that what should have happened in the first instance? Why now? Why after 200, we can, we can deduct the 31 million because that's phase three and the public protector refers to that. Let's take your, your figure, 206 million. Why was 206 million rand of taxpayers' money wasted without adherence to, pr to principles of project management, oversight, and adherence to various prescripts? Why? Who's responsible for that? And then with regard to the other outstanding security things, personally, Chairperson, I'm not in favor of spending one single cent, not one cent further on that project. Why? <coughs> The taxpayers has done so already. Let's go and find the missing millions, because there are missing millions. And once we find that money, then we can complete the project. But the taxpayer should not pay one further cent.